How cyclic AMP controls blood glucose? Hormones like epinephrine, glucagon are going to increase the glucose levels. At the same time, another hormone like insulin is going to decrease the glucose levels. Now, the effect of epinephrine and glucagon is mediated by the cyclic AMP, which increases the blood glucose levels. Cyclic AMP increases the glucose levels by affecting the various mechanisms which results in the raised blood glucose levels. For example, cyclic AMP can cause increased glycogenolysis, that is a breakdown of the glycogen to the produced glucose, and it can inhibit the glycogenesis, that is the synthesis of the glycogen from the glucose. With these two effects, the glucose levels are increased. And cyclic AMP can also affect the other two mechanisms like it can inhibit the glycolysis that is a conversion of the glucose into the pyruvate and it can also increase the gluconeogenesis, the synthesis of the glucose from the non-carbohydrate sources. By all these process, cyclic AMP increases the glucose levels in the body. And epinephrine can also increase the glucose levels by affecting the insulin. Epinephrine can inhibit the release of the insulin, thereby it can also increase the glucose levels. Now in this video, let us see what is the role of cyclic AMP in increasing the blood glucose levels. So let us see role of cyclic AMP in glycogenesis and glycogenolysis. Glycogenesis is a process of conversion of the glucose to the glycogen. Glucose is initially converted into UDP glucose, then UDP glucose is going to be converted into glycogen by addition of this glucose to the glycogen primer. In this way, glucose is going to be polymerized to the growing chain of the glycogen. And glycogen also involves the breakdown of the glycogen and glycogen can be broken down to produce the glucose 1-phosphate which is then further converted into glucose. Now these are the two important uh, steps in the glycogenesis and glycogenolysis. Now conversion of this UDP glucose to the glycogen is mediated by one of the key enzyme glycogen synthase A enzyme. On the other hand glycogen is converted to glucose 1-phosphate by the phosphorylase A enzyme. Here the letter A indicates they are the active enzymes. Now let us see what is the role of cyclic AMP in these two metabolic pathways. Cyclic AMP increases the protein kinase A enzyme which is then going to convert the glycogen synthase A into glycogen synthase B which is the inactive form of the enzyme. In this way protein kinase A inhibits the glycogenesis that is the conversion of the glucose to glycogen. At the same time this protein kinase A can convert the phosphorylase B enzyme which is inactive into its active form phosphorylase A enzyme. This is not a direct activation. Protein kinase A is initially activating few of the kinases which then cause the activation of the phosphorylase enzyme. Now once the phosphorylase A which is the active form of the enzyme is going to be formed, it converts the glycogen to glucose 1-phosphate which is then converted into glucose. In this way, cyclic AMP increases the glycogenolysis, that is a breakdown of the glycosin. These two results in the increased glucose levels in the body. Now let us see what is the role of the cyclic AMP in the glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. Fructose 6-phosphate is one of the intermediate in the glycolysis as well as the gluconeogenesis. It can be phosphorylated by two types of enzymes. Fructose 6-phosphate can be converted into fructose 1,6-biphosphate by the enzyme phosphofructokinase 1, commonly called as PFK1. And then this fructose 1,6-biphosphate is incorporated into the glycolysis pathway. And fructose 6-phosphate can also be converted into fructose 2,6-biphosphate by another enzyme phosphofructokinase 2, PFK2. Now this uh, fructose 2,6-biphosphate is playing a key role in controlling the glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. This fructose 2,6-biphosphate is going to stimulate the PFK1 activity, thereby it increases the glycolysis pathway. Now glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. These are the two important processes by which the glucose levels are going to be controlled in the body.
Glycolysis involves the important step, the conversion of the fructose 6-phosphate to the fructose 1,6-biphosphate. And this step is mediated by one of the enzyme PFK1, that is phosphofructokinase 1. Gluconeogenesis involves the, the reversal of this step. Fructose 1,6-biphosphate is converted to fructose 6-phosphate by the enzyme fructose 1,6-biphosphatase enzyme. As already we have seen, the glycolysis and gluconeogenesis is controlled by fructose 2,6-biphosphate. This fructose 2,6-biphosphate is going to stimulate the PFK1 activity. At the same time, it inhibits the fructose 1,6-biphosphatase enzyme activity. In this way, fructose 2,6-biphosphate increases the glycolysis and decreases the gluconeogenesis. Now PFK2 that is a phosphofructokinase 2 is responsible for the generation of fructose 2,6-biphosphate which is affecting this glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. What is this PFK2? PFK2 is having the two activities like kinase activity as well as phosphatase activity. Normally when this PFK2 is activated it increases the kinase activity resulting in the fructose 6-phosphate to the fructose 2,6-biphosphate. And it is also having the phosphatase activity which results in the conversion of the fructose 2,6-biphosphate to the fructose 6-phosphate. Normally PFK2 inhibit this phosphatase activity thereby it mainly converts the fructose 6-phosphate to the fructose 2,6-biphosphate. And now once this fructose 2,6-biphosphate is formed then it results in the increased glycolysis and decreased gluconeogenesis. As already we have seen fructose 2,6-biphosphate is controlling these two metabolic pathways. When this PFK2 activity is increased, fructose 2,6-biphosphate is more formed which results in the increased glycolysis and decreased gluconeogenesis. Here the cyclic AMP plays a key role. Cyclic AMP is going to inhibit this PFK activity thereby it reverses these two process that means it de decreases the glycolysis and increase the gluconeogenesis. Now cyclic AMP inhibits the PFK2 activity thereby it increases the glucose levels within the body. In this way cyclic AMP inhibit the PFK2 activity which is normally required to synthesize the fructose 2,6-biphosphate. Since there is a less formation of fructose 2,6-biphosphate glycolysis is inhibited and gluconeogenesis is going to be increased. So this results in the increased glucose levels in the body. In this way, cyclic AMP can affect uh, the four metabolic pathways glycogenesis, glycogenolysis, glycolysis and gluconeogenesis and increase the glucose levels by increasing the glycogen breakdown that is the glycogenolysis as well as increased formation of the glucose by the gluconeogenesis and the process like glycogenesis and uh, glycolysis are inhibited by cyclic AMP. All these effects add leading to the increased glucose levels in the body.